Dang, this sniper's really good. He almost had me. I gotta find a way to get past him. Huh, easy pickings. Got you right where I want you. There isn't any cover though. I'll have to rush him. If I can at least get to 100 feet or even closer, he'll be forced to switch to a pistol. Then I'll have my chance. Come on, I know you wanna do it. Eat your head out again. Come on, I dare you. I'll make a great TikTok video. You can do this. You got this, you got this. And go! There he is. Wait, what is he doing? Is he actually trying to rush me? No way. Come on, come get closer. I want you to do it. Come on, I got something for you. All right, I have you now. And you're pulling, what is that? Hit, 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 hit. Gosh dang it, what even happened? I thought I had you. Oh, now you know. Don't rush a sniper. When it comes to selecting an airsoft replica that is compact, that performs well, and is affordable, honestly, the gas powered pistol is pretty much the way to go. I mean, you could build them out nowadays and perform so well. I mean, it's, it's there's, there's no way around it, you whoa, know? Like, whoa, What's going on here? What do you mean? You're forgetting something. The PDW. Oh. You know what? You're right. I'll be right back. I already have some PDWs. What's going on, Mail Game? My name is Boaz. And Isaiah. Today we're going to be going over some of our favorite gas blowback PDWs. But what exactly is a PDW? Well, for the sake of this list, we're going to narrow it down to anything using a very skinny style magazine like this, like an SMG. And it has to be in a very small, compact, lightweight package such as this. The smaller, the better. Yeah, and for me, I like to emphasize gas blowback. Because yes. obviously there's tons of AEG PDWs out there, and yeah, we'd be here all day. But come on, man, AEGs are kind of boring right now. And it's gas season, so we're gonna be ripping through some gas with some gas blowback PDWs. The first gas blowback PDW on our list is going to be the Airsoft GI Custom Spectre. This is probably gonna be uh, the most PDW you're gonna get if you know you know, right? But looking at this thing, ultra compact. Uh, in fact, pretty much the outer barrel stops here at the front of the replica. And then back here is where all most of the action's happening. And then at the rear, you get a nice polymer folding stock, which stows away even smaller. It's almost, it almost becomes just like a regular gas blowback pistol at that point. But you can easily deploy the stock with the push of a button over here and you, this thing snaps in place and you're ready to go to business, which is super nice. I love that this thing comes included with some Picatinny real estate. So you do have some Picatinny rails here on the rear of the replica where you can mount an optic of your choosing. And then on the bottom, you have your accessory rail where you can mount flashlights or vertical grips. Uh, personally for me, if I were to be running the Airsoft GI Custom Gas Blowback Spectre, I would probably choose a flashlight just because more than likely, if I'm running this guy, I'm probably gonna be playing at an indoor field and indoor fields are not very well lit. So you just kind of need the, the light in order to help move around and also to identify which players you wanna tag out on the field. Shooting the Airsoft GI Custom Spectre is nice, crisp, and snappy. I love the trigger response on this thing. And I love the feedback that you get when you shoot a gas blowback Airsoft replica. There's just nothing quite like it. And in addition to, it, to being very nice and snappy internally, this guy rocks and is compatible with pretty much all of Tokyo Maru G series parts. There's just tons of upgrade parts out there available for this guy. And that's one thing that I really love. Uh, additionally, I love how aggressive the stippling is on the, on the grip on this guy. It just feels nice when you hold it with your shooting hand. It just locks your hand in place. And I love that texture that you get when you grip this guy. Uh, additionally, you do have a flared magwa at the bottom. And again, because it takes Tokyo Marie G series parts, it's gonna also take a Tokyo Marie G series magazine, which is really nice. There's just tons of options out there available to you. And if you want to upgrade this guy, this guy is the limit. Now that I talked about all the things that I love about the gas blowback Spectre, here are some things that I do not like. Number one, there's no functionality for full auto. Come on, man. Like if this is gonna be a gas blowback SMG or a gas blowback PDW, I kind of want this guy to go full auto. The second thing that I don't really like is uh, the fact that the stock is so small. I mean, just shouldering this guy, there's just not a lot of space here to really brace yourself. You just, it's more like a little touch and go at this point where you just kind of touch it into your shoulder and then you're just ready to go. Uh, so some, some of you guys might like that feature, but personally for me, I wish I had a bit more of stock real estate. 
All in all, the Airsoft GI Custom Spectre Gas Billback is a very affordable option for any of those of you guys who feel, uh, I guess you would say, like under firepowered when you're just running simply just a gas blowback pistol secondary and you want to step up to something a little bit more serious looking. And not only is it affordable, but it can take a plethora of aftermarket parts, which is something that we wanted to go for when we were building this thing. And it's available right now on our website, airsoftgi.com. So make sure to take a look if you guys are interested. My pick for the best, most affordable gas PDW has got to be what I'm holding in my hands, the WeTech SMG8. Now, if this looks familiar to a lot of you guys watching right now, uh, just ignore that. This is basically your MP7 at home. Not quite right there, but again, still looks fantastic. And again, one of the most affordable affordable options that we carry at GI for gas PDWs. But getting into the external, this is gonna be sporting a full polymer construction throughout, making this a very, very lightweight and easy to carry around option. You do get, of course, your two front and rear sights here, which you actually have the options as to which sight style you'd like to go with and a retractable PDW stock as well. Here are a couple things I actually really like about the SMG8. One, it's gonna be, like I mentioned earlier, it's construction, the fact that it's super lightweight, I can easily dual wield two of these bad boys. The retractable stock is nice and easy to adjust to your liking. I like the fact that even though it is a PDW, you get plenty of rail space throughout, so you can put whatever sort of accessories of your choosing. I'm just running to run a little laser box and of course an optic. This is how I would run it with a little vertical grip on there. But this is still a WeTech design, meaning that there are still gonna be companies making upgrade components for this SMG. And of course, the fact that this thing shoots pretty dang fast. It's an, it's an SMG, it's a gas SMG. You have to run it with full auto. Now here are some things I don't like about the SMG8 because there are a few. Number one has got to be the pistol grip itself. It's a little too chonky for my liking. It could be the fact that I just have really small baby hands, but that's just something to keep in mind if you do have smaller hands. Number two is going to be the fact that it is shooting just way too hot for any CQB indoor field. Now you would expect something like this out the box would be shooting closer to 340, maybe even 350, but unfortunately that is not the case. It is shooting closer to 385 to about 395 FPS right out the box, meaning you will have to buy a lower power bolt assembly for this bad boy, which can be annoying if you are primarily an indoor player. However, I'm an outdoor player, so running SMGs outside is actually kind of a vibe. And the last one, it's more of a preferential thing, just a little annoying, is the fact that every time you bring this out to a field, you are constantly gonna be berated with, oh my gosh, is that an MP7? What MP7 is that? And you have to tell them, no, it's an SMG8. And then they're gonna ask you, what's that? And then you have to explain the whole thing. It's not that big of a deal, but it's still something to keep in mind. Speaking from personal experience, I actually have owned one of the WeTech SMG8s from way back in the day, way before I started working at Airsoft GI. And I gotta say, I had an absolute blast with it. It was one of the very first Airsoft replicas I ever bought with my own money. And this was so much fun to bring onto the outdoor field. Even though I was primarily an outdoor player, running the SMG was still really, really cool. And I actually earned quite a bit of long range uh, kills, even though I was using a much smaller platform compared to everyone else rocking like an M4 or an AK. So I would say that this bad boy actually has a lot of potential still because back then I didn't realize that you could upgrade. The upgrades were a completely foreign concept to me. But now looking back, I look very fondly at those memories and honestly, I kind of want to pick another one up. The next gas blowback PDW on my list is going to be the Vorsk Airsoft VGS 1X gas blowback SMG. Come on guys, look at this thing. Absolutely sick. I don't know what did it for me this time around because Vorsk did release, I believe, a very similar looking model. I believe, no, it's the exact identical model. <laughs> I think it was a VMP1, I believe, uh, like a year or so ago. And I didn't really think too much of it, but then the VGS1X came out and I'm just floored. Mock suppressor, it has to be the mock suppressor. I think just how chonky and thick the included mock suppressor you get out of the box, I think that's kind of what it did it for me, honestly. But uh, aside from that, uh, if you guys don't know, the Vorsk VMP1 and the VGS1, it's the same model, is going to be a full polymer gas blowback SMG. The internals are gonna be metal, obviously, so that way it'll stand up to the wear and tear of a gas blowback airsoft replica. But externally, the vast majority of the parts that you're gonna get from here are going to be a very high impact, high durability polymer material, and it feels really good in the hands. There's also some really nice texturing going around on the grip, not as aggressive as the Airsoft GI Custom 
Spectre, but it's enough texture to kind of help you get a good grip on this replica when you're shooting it downrange. Additionally, there are tons of rail real estate here. As you can see, we absolutely tricked out this guy to the nines. We put tons of accessories on here just to show you how much stuff you can do in such a small little package. But if you wanted to run this guy completely slick, that's totally fine. There's actually some integrated fiber optics iron sights here, which is pretty cool to see. And you have this really nice uh, folding stock that has an interesting twist because the stock itself twists with you. So if you want to like run it at a slight angle, you could easily do it because the end of the stock swivels with you. So basically what I'm getting from this is the bigger and thicker, the more you like it. Oh, absolutely. What do you mean by that? With all that being said, what do I like about the Vorsk VGS-1X? Number one, this sheer amount of stuff they give you out of the box, okay? The spare magazine, this, my favorite, the chonky mock suppressor, the spare internal parts, okay? Gotta be one of my favorite things. Number two, the aftermarket compatibility on this thing is super dope. The fact that you can use a lot of parts that are shared with the Kittyway KMP9 and use it on this bad boy is a huge plus for me. And the third thing that I like about this guy is that it's a little chonkier, it's a little beefier than the Kittyway KMP9. And because of that, there are gonna give you a lot more uh, rail real estate to attach more accessories to make your airsoft replica look super dope like this. Here are some things I don't like about the VGS-1X. Number one is going to be the stock. Uh, the stock, in my opinion, doesn't look all that cool. I kind of wish that they came out with maybe like a buffer tube version where you can put like a M4 retractable stock. I think that would have been really popular. Uh, or even if that, like if they went with like a more like modern, like MPX style Picatinny end cap, style stock, I think that would have looked really cool on this guy, but they decided to go for this like weird in-between version, uh, in my opinion. So aesthetically, I don't think it looks the best. Number two, again, it's gonna be the stock, uh, just folding this guy. And like, I'm even struggling to do it now after like practicing, oh gosh, like doing this thing is so tough to do. You know what, I'm not even gonna try it. Okay, just, just folding the stock is a, a whole song and dance in and of itself. So I would recommend if you were to run a VGS-1X, just leave the stock open, okay? There's no reason for you to fold it. Just leave it deployed and you'll be fine. Uh, the third thing that I kind of wish that Borsk did, if they were gonna be inspired from the Kittyway KMP9, I wish they made further improvements. Like I wish that they came out with like an enlarged bolt release or an enlarged magazine release, uh, things of that nature. Uh, I, I don't really like how the fact that they just decided to keep it as similar looking as possible to the KMP9. I wish they kind of took it and ran with it, you know? So I do have somewhat of a user experience with the VGS-1X uh, because in the past I've owned the parent, I guess the grandparents of the VGS-1X, which would be the Kittyway KMP9. I've owned it for about a year and a half and had tons of fun with it. I think my only regret was not buying enough magazines for it because it chews through ammo. The rate of fire on this bad boy is insane. And when you flip this guy to full auto, you will dump the mag in about less than two seconds. Uh, so having a lot of ammo is gonna be a requirement if you want to run this guy as a primary. It was fairly reliable in my experience. I think I did have to take it to Kitty Wheel once to get a nozzle replaced, which is pretty par for the course for something very high rate of fire, which I'm glad that Vorsk is including a spare nozzle out of the box. In today's airsoft market, it can be quite overwhelming trying to figure out what airsoft gun you need, which is why at Airsoft GI, we proudly present the Mayo Gang MGC4. We have developed a line of airsoft guns directly using the input and feedback from the airsoft community from airsofters of all walks of life to not only develop an airsoft lineup that was going to perform fantastic, but also be incredibly accessible. If you want more information regarding the MGC4 and to see all the different variations we have available, make sure to head on over to airsoftgi.com. And if you were looking for an airsoft gun that was built by airsofters for airsofters and meant to dominate the airsoft fields, the MGC4 is the only clear answer. Now I want to give an honorable mention to a platform that we haven't discussed yet, one that often gets overlooked even in the airsoft community itself, and that has got to be the Tokyo Marui Scorpion Mod D. Now this has got to be one of the most unique and fun airsoft replicas that you can find at airsoftgi.com, very similar to the original VZ Scorpion from way back in the Cold War, but updated for the modern day and age with your M-Lock handguard. It's got the 50 shades of FDE going on. It's an absolute vibe and I love this thing. However, there is still one fatal flaw that prevents this from being an actual pick. 
and it's not gas. That, that is the unfortunate reality. Yes, this is not a gas blowback. This is an AEG. I'm sorry, boys, it's an I AEP. failed. AEP. AEP, my AEP. apologies. Ma D, bro, Scorpion Ma D. Ma D's <laughs> nuts, nuts, boy. <laughs> All right, Scorpion for the modern day. Come on, bro. We have like the, what's it, the ASG Scorpion Evo. That's like a way better pick. Would you consider that though a, a PDW? No. Why, why'd you gotta pick this? It man? just was cool, okay? We were never gonna have an opportunity to talk about it. I just wanted to find an excuse I, to bring it on camera. Is it really that cool? I thought so. Chat, is it really that cool? I think so. It, let us know. Looking at the Scorpion Mod D close, this has definitely gotta be one of the most lightweight options that you can find out there. And even though this is an AEP, somehow Token Maru was able to squeeze the gearbox into this. I don't know how that was possible, but it still has a bit of that Japanese space magic out there. Many of these types of airsoft replicas are able to really compete and touch opponents way further out there. And this one is actually of no exception. Again, this would have been a pick that I would have easily chosen as mine, but the fact that it is an AP and not gas is the only thing harming it. But now I gotta ask, Tokimarui, why? Why didn't you make this gas? Here's, here, listen to me what I'm saying right now. Make this, exact same everything, but gas. You're welcome. What would a list video be without some honorable mentions? So here's one honorable mention that uh, we wanted to put in the video really bad, but I don't think it officially earned its place. This is going to be the WeTech Honey Badger R5C. And let me tell you, this thing is a very, interesting looking PDW. Uh, first of all, this has come from WeTech, so they've been around for a while and they know how to make good gas blowback airsoft replicas. And uh, first and foremost, you're getting full metal construction. This is probably gonna be the heftiest, the heaviest gas blowback PCC on our list, but I don't mind the heft, like it feels solid. Like when I shoulder this thing, I feel very confident just because of the heft. It feels very solid in the hands. That's one thing I love about WeTech gas blowbacks is that especially on their bigger replicas, they do feel pretty high quality. Uh, second of all, you do get a nice PDW style wire stock, which I think looks really cool. And uh, up here, you have a very interesting small little handguard. It's definitely, I guess, in that PDW realm because of how short and small it is. It's very nice and chonky, which I like, but it's not M-Lock, which is weird. They, they have their own proprietary like rail mounting system. It's no fun, but they do include the rail segments for you out of the box if you want to use it. And then finally, it does come with this very interesting looking mock suppressor out of the box, uh, perfectly recessed all the way in. There's, there's no outer barrel exposed. It's, it's all the way in. And uh, yeah, I, I'd say it looks pretty interesting. Uh, I, I guess uh, some other things to point out would be the fact that uh, it's using the standard WeTech M4 uh, upper receiver group and bull carrier. And it has a very nice, I guess, very small grip. It's like my hand kind of swallows it up, which is kind of weird because I also have kind of small hands. Like I kind of wish you just put a regular M4 grip on this thing, but it is what it is. And you have standard M4 style controls, which will be very familiar if you're coming from an M4 platform, because let's be honest, you are. Here's some interesting quirks about the R5C Honey Badger from WeTech. Uh, take it for how you will. It might be a plus or it might be a minus for you. But uh, the first quirk I noticed is that this looks like a G-Series, Tokyo Mirror G-Series magazine. It is not. It is a proprietary magazine specifically designed for the R5C. So, you know, uh, I guess the upside is that this is guaranteed to work and it's gonna work well, work better than if they were to use a standard G-Series magazine. The downside is, come on, man, why don't you just make it compatible with the G-Series magazine? Come on, dude. Uh, the second quirk is that, as you can see on the lower here, uh, this is a standard M4 looking lower. Now I'm saying looking because it looks like a standard M4 lower, but it is not. Uh, it has a block here to help guide and properly seat this proprietary magazine in there. Uh, WeTech, come on, man, like, wh what's stopping you? Why don't you just do the thing like all the other AEG PCCs do and just make a nice, smaller, little skinnier magwell for this guy? Like, I don't know what stopped you. Uh, but other than that, uh, you do get a nice monolithic top rail, so it's good for mounting lots of accessories to it, I guess. And uh, at the end of the day, it is WeTech, so it's gonna have a lot of aftermarket compatibility. And there are tons of, I guess you would say, even for the WeTech M4 parts would also fit and work internally with this guy as well. So personally, I've never owned specifically this R5C, but I have owned a WeTech Gaswell like M4 before. And I will say 
that it is a ton of fun to use on the airsoft field. It was my first serious gas blowback primary replica that I that I use on the airsoft field. And uh, I will say that like depend uh, no matter what people say online on the internet, there's some people will say like, you know, their Wii tech is completely stock and they run it nothing but stock forever and it works great. Other people say like it's super prone to breaking. Uh, in my experience, it's somewhere in the middle. Like I was able to run uh, my Wii tech gas blowback M4 fine for about I would say about a year before I started encountering some issues and then I had to start replacing parts one by one with higher quality parts internally. Personally for me, if I were to own something like this R5C, honestly, I would just yeet the lower completely and then I would just buy a standard WeTech lower and then I would just run M4 magazines on this. Uh, there, there's no reason for this guy to exist with such a skinny mag like this and not have it look cool. Like I, I, I can't get over this. I can't. I can't, do you believe this Isaiah? Do do you look at this thing? Like, is this? Do people like this? Is this what they want? Like, this is weird, man. Okay, that about wraps it up for our list of our favorite gas blowback. PDWs. Honestly, they're both very affordable and they're both an absolute vibe. And honestly, looking back, I really do dig the VGS 1X. I, I think it's a well. very solid pick. Yeah. However, I personally, I don't really enjoy the SMG. Well, you know what? I take back everything I just said. If you pick this, you are absolutely you dead to me. What are you talking about, bro? Like this thing is now part of a larger, I guess, oh. just an ecosystem. You know, the platform is evolving this for the This makes KMP a lot 9. more sense. No originality, no imagination, well, love there's, standardization. There's tons of creativity within the confines of think standards. Think outside the box. No, think like an airsofter. Regardless, guys, let us know what your guys' pick would be. Let us know which one you like more down in the comments down below. And if you like what you're seeing, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe and ring that bell icon to get notified every time we upload a new video. If you want to support the channel directly, make sure to get all your airsoft goodies from airsoftgi.com. Remember, any orders 179 or more automatically qualify for free shipping. Yep, and with that, uh, that's that's about it from us. So, my name is Boaz. My name is Isaias. Catch you next time, Mail Gang. Take it easy, guys.